and please welcome Alain Gardon from France. Bonjour. <laughs> Cette conférence ne sera pas en français. <laughs> so, hello. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Um, a few words of introduction because I am French, although I don't sound French, but I was born in Algeria in 1949, so that makes me 73 years old. And, uh, yes, <laughs> but I have some makeup on. <laughs> and um, then uh, my parents moved quickly to Egypt, where I was raised for 16 years until 1967. And so I learned some Arabic, but I was in an American school, which explains my bad French accent when I speak English. And um, then I went to the States and studied for six years in social sciences, and then went to France. These lights are deadly. I can't see anybody. So. And then I went to France, did my military service, so I started learning French the hard way, and um, very quickly got into training. I uh, can see more there, so I have a tendency to look there, but I, okay. uh, I got into training and that was in 1976. Um, yeah, and, uh, in, uh, and with transactional analysis, which was a psychological approach, uh, made easier. Uh, and using it in training and organizations. And then gradually, I realized that it was much more interesting to do work within teams than to spread knowledge to people who didn't work together. So I got away from training and more and more into teamwork, which I call team development, is focused on helping teams get along together better, but also to achieve results. And that was in the 80s with a, a systemic approach because I stumbled on some books on family therapy when I was working with teams. And I made a connection very quickly saying actually in families they're working with systems. When I work with teams, I work with systems. And so I started getting into systems approach in the 80s, 85, and um, went on like this, doing teamwork and then organization work, which was, for me, more than team coaching. In other words, in a room like this one, but even bigger, you can have up to 10 teams working together and orchestrate organization work simultaneously. So it's a team of teams, we could say, including the executive team, but other teams, and everybody's orchestrated to work together. That's for me, organization coaching. So I've been doing this for a number of years, and then actually in 19, no, in 2002, um, the ICF called me to do a conference in Sieges on team coaching. Now, I was not a coach, and I told them I'm not a coach, so I can't do that. And they said, everybody says you do some kind of team coaching, so please come and just talk about what you do. And this is where I met the ICF, actually, in, in 2002. And I luckily heard Sir John Whitmore give a speech the day before. And so I listened and said, oh, that's coaching, because I knew nothing about coaching. And then I stayed up all night and thought about, okay, what do I do that is close to coaching? What do I do that is not coaching? And I reconfigured the conference the next day. For me, it was really paradoxical. Uh, it's really paradoxical as a coach that doesn't give answers to be on the stage and give answers. So you're doing the opposite of what you're supposed to do. And people don't hear the message because they look at what you do. So I'm not a professional speaker. I'm a coach. But when you're a professional speaker, you're not a coach. Okay? So th there's a lot of paradox uh, about it. So I thought about it, did my conference. It was... Okay, a first, uh, a first experience, I can always improve. And, um, and then I, meeting the, the, the coaching world through the ICF, I passed my exams, I wrote a first book on team coaching, and I got into the coaching world and um, started a school in 2005 to on systemic coaching. 
Okay, so it's systemic coaching through and through. And tomorrow there's going to be a, a, a workshop of, uh, on systemic coaching, but individual. So enough on the introduction, uh, which is general about myself, and more to say about the kind of work we're going to do here. Now, it's very paradoxical, again, to have a demonstration with a team, with a lot of people observing, so it's show business, okay? <laughs> Um, and you have spotlights and everything. So uh, how can you do some real teamwork in this kind of conditions? Okay, It is out of the question in a way. But the idea is to give a feeling, a, a, a quick feeling of what could be team coaching. And we have a very uh, what uh, innovating team that is, uh, like it was said before, I think it's the first time that an organization team, an ICF organization team, decides to get on the stage and do a demo. And that was a suggestion uh, that I made, and I don't want to get into it too far yet, but uh, when, when I was asked to do a demo of team coaching, I said, it's impossible unless you have a real team. So uh, Catherine right away said, well, we'll have to look for one, and I said, you are one. What about, you know, the organization team? And she says, ooh. <laughs> okay. She says, we'll have to think about it and talk about it. And that's all I know until I came here, because finally she says, okay, some people are agreeing to do it. They're volunteers, and let's do it. So please welcome the excellent organization team for this event and the volunteer team for this demo. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now please uh, make yourselves transparent, right? No <laughs> noise, nothing, so they can focus and, and get into it. And before we start, actually, um, I asked you the question yesterday, and it's a question to everybody, uh, because we don't really have a contract on anything. And my question would be, well, if this was a you know, real team coaching and you wanted to work on something together, what would be the, the main focus or the main goal that you, you would like to achieve as a team or the you know, main purpose of the team coaching? Yeah. So, um, can I start? Oh, sure. Yeah. sure. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I, it's, it's Alan, it's actually quite easy. I almost don't see anybody outside the stage. There's no stage. So, where my mind goes uh, about how we can be even greater and better as a team together, and I'm already so proud of that you are all together here on stage. How can we work together in the future by balancing productivity and positivity in our work? Because as an ICF Estonia team, there is enormous amount of things we could do and the limited resources of who we are and who we can engage. So how can we stay focused and do what we do having pleasure. Okay. Any, any I would actually add that uh, how uh, each and every one of us could do something that we really enjoy and is in our zone of strength and passion so that we can grow together, enjoy time as we spend it together, but at the same time ICF Estonia as organization would get bigger and greater and cooler. Mm. I'll ask the question maybe in a different way. If you were at the end of the year and you were much more effective, much better in what you do, having much more fun, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, what would be the difference with today? Maybe the impact. 
the impact that we have in terms of coaching fields and also on each other. The more cohesion we have internally, the more cohesion we have externally. So the better we are amongst ourselves, the more we can impact the coaching sort of world and coaching society. For me, it would be that uh, uh, our member, uh, the, the number of our members have increased quite mm -hmm. a lot during the recent year. Mm -hmm. And I would say that it would be that I know everybody. I really feel that I know everybody, that I have done something, we have done something together. Mm -hmm. And I'm really proud of what we have done together, not separately. Mm -hmm. You're saying together twice. Yes. Okay. Does this give a hint as to an avenue? Yes? No? What? Mm. Uh, for the same question, <laughs> I, would, I would see a sustainability. Because mm -hmm. when we have done something with fun and pleasure, I believe there are more people who want to continue if, because their team needs new blood. Uh, if some members or I, let's say, get tired and want to give it over, I have a belief that there are people who want to do it. Yes, as Katri said, we have uh, almost 70 members. and. Uh, uh, I would also to see that uh, everybody's mindset is depends on me and everyone is active, not just beautiful picture in our uh, web page. <laughs> Can I ask you, uh, well, uh, maybe a, a, a question that's kind of in my mind. Uh, how is your seating order uh, reflecting something about your team. In other words, what could be the significance of your relative <laughs> positioning here? Well, quite a lot, to be honest, mm. because there's four people here who are part of ICF of Estonia board. Which? Us four. Ah, so you're, um, you're a clan. And, and we have three members, mm -hmm. potential members of the board. Mm. Uh -huh. <laughs> and the four of the board are facing the there. Point. The three are back there. What else? Uh, the three of us are also the members who were establishing the... The founding members. The fo yeah, founding yeah, members. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, two of you. Okay. I you came a bit okay. later. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Long time ago, but still. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so we are so there in the beginning. So you're the pillars. <laughs> The historical Peter, the, the dinosaurs. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> we, yeah, we are nice dinosaurs. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I'm, the, I'm the rookie here, the, the newest rookie. one, the newest board member in mm. the ICF. Stand. In this side, mm -hmm. yes. but you're still on this side. You're sort of the hinge. Is he on the hinge? No. Okay. okay. Oh, it's so interesting. Three ladies and three ladies and one yeah, yeah, gentleman yeah. in the middle. Yeah, that doesn't... Uh, and, 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 you know, and, <laughs> no. Anything else? Well, maybe that is a bridge between current board members and maybe future members of the board. Mm -hmm. So, because Melis is the latest addition to our board. Yeah. Maybe he's kind of like the he's bridge. It, he's across. illustrating how to get in. Yeah. yeah. Well, he was also mm. polite enough to let all the ladies on the stage first yeah. after yeah. you. But mm -hmm. so maybe that's why he's on the on the on the on that side. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm not asking why. I'm asking what mm. could be the mm -hmm. significance. What could be the metaphor? Bridge. Because yeah. why? Well, I, I took a chair in the order I came in. Yeah. Well, and this is a certain level of reality. But there's a political geography. There is a significance for me as well. You know, board is board, but it doesn't mean anything except on a paper. But then it's not the board who makes things happen. There are many more people who make things happen. Well, like in a company. 
Hmm. <laughs> the board doesn't do anything. <laughs> 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 they orchestrate. Yeah. Hmm. So we are looking for a symbol. Are you looking for a metaphor or symbol? No, I'm asking you the question, mm -hmm. what could be the significance? Now, in, in a way, we could say there's a symmetry. Mm -hmm. Now, on this side, what's the symmetry? And on this side, what's the symmetry? That is just the organization of the uh, stage. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for answering first. Mm. Maybe they should answer first. <laughs> I don't know, I see the parallel that we are here in the uh, ICF uh, marketing uh, working group. So this is the kind of, that unites us in this mm -hmm. side. And here is the board, so this is the kind Yeah, th that's that symmetry. But I'm wondering about the symmetry in this group. Mm -hmm. You know, what shows between you. Mm -hmm. And then the symmetry in that group, but maybe in this group. I don't understand. You know, that what's... Question. What's your relative position in detail could be revealing? You know? You understand? No clue. No? Okay. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, actually. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm mm -hmm. not quite sure that we got, got mm -hmm. the question right now. Mm -hmm. Can you okay. repeat it? <laughs> no, I, I'm just, you know, going on with the same question, which is, What's your political geography uh, revealing, or your geography revealing about your interactions and your history? And uh, what's the political geography uh, in this accidental choice of chairs? Mm. <laughs> Is it accidental? <laughs> Never. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the board uh, looks to the audience, mm. but they yeah. don't really see them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Not sure about the audience. And you turn your back. Marketing. Yeah. Very Marketing. Good. <laughs> <laughs> mm. You look yeah. at the board. <laughs> of course. No, of course. They are the messengers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, them. I think them. <laughs> one, one uh, thing for me is, is quite ob obvious. I don't know how it happened. But yeah, we have worked together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you have worked together. We, mm -hmm. so yeah, yeah. we yeah. know yeah. each yes. other better. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Mm. And yeah. I felt that uh, I have to sit beside Scott Trail. Mm -hmm. It's just some kind of, I don't know, mm -hmm. that uh, there is more connection. Mm -hmm. it, is, it was just the feeling. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And I was working with all these ladies separately, but not together as a team, so... <laughs> I guess mm. the symmetry is that the, the people who know each other the best... And is there the same yes. between you two? Yes, yes. yes we okay, know. so there's a symmetry mm. between two and two here. Uh, no. on, the, on the other hand, I'm working uh, close uh, to this group because... Mm -hmm. uh, She's leading uh, the marketing. I, I am, yes, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, leading the marketing uh, mm -hmm. But you decided uh, to sit there. Mm -hmm. She's on the board. That's more important. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I felt a little bit like, um, yeah, uh, like, uh, you know, t where to sit, to, to sit uh, beside Katrin or to, to join you, it was, mm -hmm. yeah, I had this feeling, I, I was, wasn't sure, yeah. If I could sit uh, between there, yeah. No, you could, yeah. we could change. <laughs> yeah, and uh, it's an interesting uh, opening, in other words, um, you could say if you change by the end of the year and your whole system had evolved, and you came on the same stage and sat spontaneously that would reveal a new political geography, what would be a change that you would like to happen by the end of the year? Yeah. You understand? Yeah. In other words, you're revealing something of today which is what it is and has its history but it may also reveal what you think collectively should happen or could happen in the future to, to change the flow, the interactive flow. Yeah. Claire? Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not going to really ask the question formally because we said it's going to be a very short demonstration and it's good to you know, move to the rest of the group. 
but okay. Uh, is there anything you want to say before I set you free? It looks for me that there are two different teams now on the stage. Mm -hmm. One is here. I'm a little bit here. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> There's another team, and uh, well, I really hope to see, mm -hmm. for example, at mm -hmm. the end of the year, that we mm -hmm. might more mixed up. Mm -hmm. It's not mm -hmm. the same uh, fixed structure, and then I hope there is somebody else sitting in your seat. And, uh, you hope that somebody else? Somebody else is going to take your seat, and we can have... Uh, well, I'm uh, just leaving. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> now I have a question. Actually, uh, I ha we had asked for uh, seven plus one seat. And uh, when the stage was set, there was one more empty chair that we took away. That's Ivar's. Okay, so you know who would have been here. Well, he's the member of the board, okay. and he's missing today. Yes, so. yes, yes. Well, yeah. So there's, his chair was expected, and at some point, one of the organizers said, but you're seven, and there's nine chairs, or you're seven, and there's eight chairs. I said, well, what do you want to do? And they said, should we take one away? And I say, if you want to. But I was ready to have his empty chair. <laughs> Coincidence so, or not? Uh, I'm actually yes. very curious. Uh, uh, my mind stayed with your question. So what we would like to change? Is there something I, we could show yeah. now? I actually would come all of us there and uh, face to our members because we are now kind of closed group. Can we do it? Yeah. Can we do it? Yes. Absolutely. Well, you can do anything, but uh, this is the first suggestion. Mm -hmm. ah. Do you jump on the first suggestion? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's a great one. <laughs> I would okay. actually, I would actually In other words, I think this is a piece of work. It could be mm -hmm. an interesting question that you go away with keeping this picture and saying, okay, what does it reveal that we want to keep? Maybe it's okay. In other words, you, you have a kind of architecture that is worthy because it helps you do things, okay? There may be things you want to tweak, okay? And experiment. You could say, okay, let's mix a group, one from this group, one from that group, one from this group, one from that group, and, you know, have a mesh. You could say, hmm, the audience is important, and let's face the audience, is very marketing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's because I'm, you know, I'm not okay. seeing You could anyone. say a lot of things, but I think the discussion is worth it, and it could be a lengthy d discussion rather than just jump into action. And now I can understand you're action-oriented than you want. Yeah, and now I, I'd like to say, would you like to try it? Mm. I think that's an even better idea would to just ditch the stage and go into the uh, audience. Yeah, mm. th th this is what's expected. It's a very short demonstration, mm. so it's not, you know, work for one hour. And the next step is to say, okay, thank you very much, and take your chairs and sit down there, and then turn to the group, because the demonstration is there to stimulate questions and answers on a much larger scale. Obviously, this is not training on team coaching, it's just a short demonstration, not a systemic team coaching. Now, there may be a bunch of questions and I can answer with more theory and so on to, to serve the purpose of the conference. Okay. So that would be my choice, but I, I see you want to take the leadership here. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so if you don't mind, is it okay? okay. okay. So, okay. and okay. take your chairs with you so you can set sure. some questions from the audience, maybe to you, so you're, keep your mics on and so on, so maybe there'll be some more. No, I'm trying to get out of the light so as to see something. Now, anybody want to make some comments or ask some questions? Uh, from the audience, and it could be from the participants also, okay? Now, again, I want to say something to, to give you... Uh, you can sit where you want. <laughs> uh, just to give you an indication, for me, the team coaching with this team didn't start here. It started the day they had some discussions as to should we do it or not. Okay, we had our phone call where I gave you the option of having a team coaching here, a uh, demonstration, and you said, okay, I'll talk with the team. And from there on, the team had discussions, okay, about the risk, 
about doing it, about getting on stage, about showing themselves. And all these discussions were already part of the team coaching. Okay? So team coaching starts before it starts. And it ends after it ends. So it could be a complete team coaching here. We call it a demonstration, but there's a time to end. But it doesn't end. Okay? It's just like any coaching process. So I'd like to underline this because, yes, it is the first time an, uh, an ICF organization um, decides to get on stage, take the risk in front of their population, their clients, and their members and everybody to you know, come up here and show who they are. So thank you very much. And yes. So questions. Now you need to, uh, there's microphones in the room. Yes, go ahead. Kvatsa kindel. Okay. Uh, minu küsimus, kas uh, kõutsida kõutse oli kuidagi teistmoodi? To coach coaches. I didn't see them as coaches. <laughs> I saw them as people. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yes, please. Uh, if it's possible, you can ask in English, but if you need translation, then, then maybe... Then we have another volunteer. From I, I can do it <laughs> myself as well, okay, but if okay. you would like... Yeah, well, and you, can, okay, so. you are a team member now. <laughs> yes. Okay, but uh, you can be heard that uh, they didn't turn you on. So at any rate, another question, please. Uh -huh. More questions. Yes, two here. Hi, it's a question to the team. So when you changed your positions, so what did you notice? Did anything change for you? <laughs> well, why can't we the same? Why can't we the same order? <laughs> sitting there. Yeah. We have changed so you're still the bridge. Yeah, sitting in the same order. Yeah. So we what, changed your what you're here. underlining, yeah. thank you because I didn't even notice. I was done with them and, <laughs> and actually they're never done. Okay. <laughs> But there is more of a wave here, and it's a very different picture. And they are all facing you, which was part of the project suggested by one of the mm -hmm. um, you know, what marketing members. Now, what is underlying here is teams have patterns, and these patterns are always there. It's like a human being has patterns. The patterns are always there. They're good patterns or bad patterns, whichever. Okay, if you want to be negative, you can judge and say it's bad. If you want to be positive, you can say it's wonderful. And there's as much reason in the universe to say things are beautiful or they're ugly. And depending on your um, frame of reference or your mindset, you'll say, oh, they need to change. Okay? Or you can say, oh, wow, it's wonderful. It brought them so far. Okay. So patterns are good. All your patterns are good. Uh, they brought you to the place you are today. Teams have patterns. And they're not aware, because there's not a team consciousness of the fact they have patterns. But these patterns repeat and repeat and repeat and repeat. So one of the issues in team coaching, of course, is for us helping a team recognize a pattern and then saying, is there anything you want to change about it or improve about it or keep or whatever and so on. But you need to be positive about the patterns. So thank you for showing a pattern. Yes, you, you partly already answered my question. But my question would have been that um, you worked with this um, the position of, of people in the team for quite a long time so that what else was there to reveal? Or what else would you say as an analysis about this team? I wouldn't say anything. I would ask them and ask them and ask them what do they see and where do they want to go. In other words, uh, I mean, there's, I can see things. I talked about, you know, a, a kind of um, um, symmetry. And there's one between a guy and a guy. 
You know, so he chooses a chair directly opposite mine and so on. <laughs> so we can wonder about what the guide dyna dynamics may, be, may come up. But this is interpretation until it happens. When it starts happening, you can say, hmm, I have the feeling there's something going between us. I'm part of it. Okay, so it's not judgmental. And um, you, know, you can work with whatever emerges. That's what a coach does. So I, I don't have any project on this. Uh, my answer underlines, however, that I am always part of the system somehow. I can't say it's you, not me, because it's happening with me and I set myself up to be close to the flip chart and so on and so forth. So it structures also in a way around the coach and the coach is part of the problem or the solution. Have the mic. Thank you. Thank you. But I, I have a question. Uh, yes. Before before we went on stage, uh, you several times told us uh, it's not my demo coaching. It's <laughs> yours. <laughs> it's not my team. It's yours. You're contradicting. Mm -hmm. Where is the truth? Well, yes. <laughs> in other words, in the, system. the the team in team coaching very often or the individual may hook the coach by coming to the coach and saying, your objective, your goal. And the coach's role is to immediately say, my goal, hmm, it's yours. Okay? So it's almost a reflex not to take any monkey any time. Okay? It's a reflex, it's a linguistic reflex. Now I wasn't thinking about it, but it came from two people or twice or something. And I just reacted and said, come on, not mine, it's yours. Mm -hmm. okay. In other words, own your decision to come up here. Mm -hmm. okay. I'm not going to do you something, uh, you know, we'll do it together. Uh, so that was a reflex, yeah. Thank you. There was another question or wasn't there? I don't know if I answer the questions completely, so don't hesitate to... I actually have a question to come. the team. Yes, question to the team. That uh, on the stage, somehow, uh, um, this long scale of this, who was first and who is rookie, it's like a very long line. How this uh, impacts your teamwork? That uh, Kadri is the founder and Melis is the rookie, and it's like very, very long time. Mm -hmm. And somehow it's popped up here. Well, it, it's normal. It always yeah. pops up. But how the, it impacts your teamwork? Oh, the, the, you're, you're going to get them to work again. They're done. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, don't ask them questions on <laughs> getting so them interested. to work. <laughs> They're done. They're off the hook. We're talking about general theory <laughs> okay. of system coaching and so on. Don't, don't get them going again. <laughs> Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anything else? Anything else? Come on. Now, son, I, do I hear? I, I don't. Yes, I see a hand. Oh, I see several hands. Hand. Yeah. Yes? Right. I, I know it was a demo, but uh, if it would have been a real team coaching, how would you have approached uh, this expectations phase where you were asking about the change they want and they expect, oh. they express quite different uh, ideas and how mm -hmm. would you have worked with that? Well, usually when you work with a team, you meet the leader first. Okay? The leader is going to have a preliminary meeting or discussion with you and so on. And there's going to be goals that I'm going to try and get as measurable as possible. I'm quite aware here that I didn't have measurable results by the end of the year. It was more like philosophical, you know, uh, what purposes or directions so I get along together, work better together and so on, but that's not measurable. So I, I would have worked the, the CEO who calls me to make sure that it's not just words, you know. And you go to any team in the world and say, we need to get along together better and work together better. I mean, it's, it, it's kind of superficial. Uh, so I would dig. And then uh, when we get with the team in the room, I will ask again and ask the CEO, please, I know what you expect. Can you speak last and let's consult the others? Yeah. In other words, here you went first, uh, Kathleen, uh, and, and obviously 
we could say in the symmetry being the president, she took the seat closest to me <laughs> and closest to the flip chart. And when I asked the question, very responsibly, she answers it. Yeah. And then everybody looks at her and then there's a silence. No. Well, this can happen very easily in most organizations. Okay. So, of course, I keep silent, but I will usually ask the leader from the start, please don't talk, I know what you want, let's consult everybody and see what comes up. But I already have the leader's goals. It doesn't mean I won't work for the leader's goals, but it's good that everybody has room to move in and help establish what we can work together for a number of days. And this is just a number of minutes here. So, uh, so there's a s stronger work on the contract dimension with the team and prior to meeting the team. Does that answer your question? Yes. Okay. You had another one. I have another one about the metaphor. You hmm? use the metaphor and the symbol. Can you explain uh, how this is helping team coaching usually or with other team as it, it does with this? W what metaphor, what symbol? You, the geographic oh. uh, sitting. That they are sitting in a way that might be a, a metaphor of their position in the board. Okay, for me, everything is in, in systems thinking. Um, there are always synchronic patterns, always. Synchronicity is a Jungian term, and Jung says synchronicity happens once in a while, and it's a, an occasion where reality reflects some inner dimension, and it's kind of a coincidence. In systems thinking, the coincidence is there all the time. It's not because you only see it once in a while that it happens once in a while. Okay? You need to learn to see it all the time. In other words, systems always have patterns. They're linguistic patterns, behavioral patterns. On an individual level, coaches know that. Coaches know they attract people they deserve. They know that they're learning through their clients what they need to develop themselves. The same thing happens with a team. A team is a system. It has its patterns. It repeats its patterns. Those patterns are good. Those patterns can also evolve. And you need to look at them and say, what do we need to change if we want to go down our road differently? Or what do we need to keep? Because we're doing it very well. But patterns are always there. For me, it's not a metaphor. It's an emergence of who they are. They're showing who they are all the time. They do who they are. Now, I'll give you another example, which is in organizations. You've been in organizations. You've been in a meeting. Okay? I imagine a lot of you go to regular meetings, executive meetings, team meetings, etc. They could be weekly, every 15 days, monthly executive team. Now, imagine you're in one of those executive teams and you listen to a sequence, 10 minutes, on any subject, like what we saw. Who speaks first? Who speaks next? Who is in a coalition? who's in opposition, who immediately says yes, but, or brings another idea, who supports immediately, who's the independent republic, who's, you know, comes early, leaves late. Over 10 minutes, just observe. Map it out. If you come back to another meeting on a completely different subject a month later, you may see exactly the same process. Okay. So a meeting subject is just an excuse, a, a pretext to repeat who we are. 
we need to meet regularly to repeat who we are and as a team we'll find subjects okay but the subject is a pretext now in this repetition you, you could go on and on for a while and you could even say okay suppose a team member leaves and another one comes in there may be a shift in roles and readjustment but within a month the show must go on you have other actors playing the same process so if you're going to be a coach you're not listening to the content you're not looking at the people you're looking at the interfacing the process you could go in the same organization one or two teams lower you may be surprised to find that the process is very close if not identical carried by completely different people so an organization is a process that is carried by people people are a pretext to carry the process you can change the people it won't change the process you want organizational change you need to focus on the process not the content not the people now they say in coaching that coaching is not psychology it's not focused on the people it's not uh, what expertise consulting it's not focused on the content it's focused on the purposes this is an illustration of what the process could be that could evolve in an organization that's what systemic team coaches focus on okay with the team they help the team become aware of the repetitious process that could be repeated in much larger systems and then help them in a viral way to modify what they want to modify in the process keeping the people keeping the subject who cares uh, you understand yeah is that clear for everybody I, I i know what i'm talking about but some people <laughs> <laughs> i have to make sure that it comes across <laughs> other questions yes i have a question actually yeah back here yes, in the dark thank you <laughs> um so uh, you say you're a systemic coach so where does the system come in in the process or the intentional intervention what coaching is in a team so you've described how you interpret the dynamics of the team in a systemic way but how does this affect the process of coaching I don't really understand your question. I, I, ha I mean, I, what's I, the difference between systemic coaching and just coaching? You know, what's oh well, the team is the client. It's not individual client. The team is a client. So when anybody you know says something, I'm not focused on the person. I'm focused on what effect it has in the team, and what. You know, energy does this present a person represent in the team? What type of energy? Okay. Now I, I had the feeling, you know, towards the end there was a push for continuing and going into action. There's a frustration to stop there. Okay, let's do the change now and so on. Um, and it was coming from some people. Now I know, in a way, that that's part of the process in the team. I know who pushes for actions, <laughs> right? Uh, and and so on. it's positive, it's negative. Who cares? That's not the. But it's it's the process. What's important is that the team is aware of this process. In other words, they can say, sometimes we're pushing for action and it's too early. Sometimes we're pushing for action and it's excellent. How can we work with this together? With the people who do it who do it well in other words it's not, you, you can't be all the same there's some people that are more analytical as soon as you say let's go to the action they'll say wait 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 we need another meeting you know uh, so you have meetings that serve to create meetings that serve to create meetings because the analytical want to analyze forever is <laughs> basically a postponing strategy to avoid action 
Okay, you could look at it that way. <laughs> so, you, you, you know, every, whatever happens, happens, and then you help the team think about it, and then say, okay, what do you need to modify if you want to become better according to you? you know, I'm not there to analyze. I'll react. Uh, and sometimes using, you know, excessive words. Oh, uh, you know, we were there first, so I'll say, you're the pillars, it's positive. You're the dinosaurs, oh, you know. Uh, so there's laughter. But just, you know, react. Uh, play, play together. I, I'm playing with a team that's playing with me. And as soon as they get into this playing dimension, is out of drama, and we're ready to continue. Now, I don't know if you measure this, but there's a lot of, you know, scared kind of resistance to come up here. Ooh, what's going to happen? Once they were up there, they didn't want to leave. <laughs> yeah? Because they could see this could go on. We could play. We, okay? That's important if you want to work with a team. Uh, to, to have them own, you know, what they want to do together. I don't know if I'm answering the question, but it was a good question and keeps me talking. <laughs> <laughs> if you have more on it, uh, yes. Uh, when you discover a pattern, uh, and then you discover that this is the pattern you have uh, got from the uh, upper floor, uh, two floors up, as you say, that uh, this repeats uh, through all the levels. Mm -hmm. Uh, what can you do? Uh, what can I do? Nothing. Uh, yes. Uh, <laughs> no, not you, but, uh, but the team. The team discovers <laughs> that we have got the pattern which is somehow we, we derived it from somewhere and we don't like it so much. Ah. You are talking about something, let's make it more specific and tell me if it's true. You're saying it comes from up there, yeah. we don't like it, what can we do? <laughs> yes? Well, if you were up there, who's up there? CEO. Maybe some senior management or some... Okay. Uh, no, now, if you were up there, yeah. who is up there? <laughs> Higher. Uh, no. So, oh, some, okay. So when you'll be there, you'll know. <laughs> <laughs> because you always have up there as an excuse. Um, okay, this is maybe a... Well, actually, no, it's not a joke. It's a saying. I think Rudyard Kipling wrote it. Uh, you know Rudyard Kipling, Mowgli, The Jungle Book? He says, the higher the monkey climbs the tree, the more you can see his ass. <laughs> So I suggest you look down at the people below <laughs> and say, what can I change? <laughs> okay. uh, now, this is systemic. I, I'm making it uh, you know, a joke. But systemic is you need to think global if you're capable of acting local. You understand? But if you think global, and want to act global, it's not your local. You need to think about what you do in your local with a global understanding. So knowing what they do up there and what you don't like, the question is, what can I change in my immediate environment, in my local, where I'm responsible, that will bring some kind of innovation or a different type of energy in the system. Yeah. So really act local. Now, if you're up there, I would have the same answer. You're up there, what could you do in your realm of respons responsibility to act local? Yeah. So everybody needs to you know, work on themselves. Yeah. Is it good? Good answer for you, enough? <laughs> or you have more? Okay, <laughs> yes. Hi, thank you for the presentation or the demo. Um, maybe two questions. One is, do you 
always have the manager or the team lead of the team yes. with the team as well. You right? cannot do family therapy without the parents. Right, good. <laughs> and the other one, um, when you discover those patterns, in the, and I'm guessing that you try to then kind of no, guide no. the team to discovering them as well, or do you at some point reveal what you see? No, no, I do what, I, that what I did here. I ask questions and so on and so forth, and, and trying to bring it deeper and deeper. I, at the first, it was around the contract and so on. I had the feeling, you know, it was staying. And so I asked a question, but there were already enough elements in what I observed of the interaction to give me and the groups and keys as to the fact that they were sitting in obvious places uh, that, that they keep, okay? That, uh, and they may want to change, uh, it will evolve. But today's pattern is today's pattern. Uh, but it's there, I just, you know, it's, it's not that I analyze it, I, I help it, you know, emerge to their consciousness uh, and have them discuss it, right? but I don't know. I just have hypotheses, there's, you know, from what I see. So it is mostly based on, on you know, observable behaviors and interactions and, 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 you know, so they can't say they didn't come in that order, they can't say they didn't speak in that order. I'm just saying, oh, you spoke first, so you came after, you came after, what could that reveal of your process? Oh, I didn't, you know, look at that with the group, but it's just work with what emerges. It's just like individual coaching. Um, now, I have trained and trained and trained and trained to catch patterns. Okay? And, and in a way, there's cultural patterns and so on. Uh, somebody told me, uh, you know, and, and, in uh, Estonia, it's like diesel engines. You have to wait till they warm up and then they'll participate, you know. Um, they, they don't start right away. Okay. Uh, if you go to Italian, it's high compression. It is, you know, you have to slow them down. <laughs> yeah. So there's cultural patterns and, the, and there's, you know, you work with it. Here is one. Uh, yes. Uh, hello. The question is that, um, as you told, uh, each organization has its patterns and most probably there is someone somehow needed for that organization to stay as it is. Now if you take one team and you show those patterns and maybe they even decide that some of them they would like to change, then uh, organizational wish, in, in my uh, understanding right now, would actually to not to, to, to have some kind of resistance and not them to change because that uh, might then um, you know change the whole organization then how how long this kind of um, pattern change uh, mm -hmm. need to be uh, taken I, I'm sure it's not only one session uh, with the team but mm -hmm. but again team is willing to change but mm -hmm. the organization is not so willing them to change okay when you say the organization uh, who is the where is the most resistant part in an organization? Maybe the top, in, in, a, in a sense that... Uh, it's the executive team. Executive team, yes. Okay. Uh, in other words, if you think in terms of systems, you have a living cell. In the cell, you have a nucleus. In the nucleus, you have the DNA. And the DNA's function is to make sure nothing changes over generations. So we just define the role of a government. In other words, as soon as I get elected, my concern is how am I going to get re-elected, increase my zone of comfort, and make sure my children take my place when I die. Okay? So create dynasties. We call it democracy, but you know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but this is normal in terms of systems. So there's strategies, but usually the most, what? Uh, paradoxically, the most resisting executive teams will say, we manage change. <laughs> yeah? In other words, anybody in the organization wants change, you come to us and we'll manage it. <laughs> yeah? 
So as soon as they say we're in charge of change management, you know, <laughs> okay, it's not going to happen. Uh, usually when they get elected, in the first six months, they're still focused on what they were elected for. And this is where the major change can come in. After a while, well, everybody gets you know, to be cooked frogs and so on. So this is one of the reasons why it's interesting to go larger than team coaching. Because very often the CEO, the leader, is aware of the need for change, uh, wants to use the executive team as a means to bring the change, and they'll resist. So it's good to get the whole layer below into the movement to light a fire under the executive team's butt. Okay? So this is kind of subversive, but it's the de definition of subversive. In other words, it comes from below, sub, you know, reverse. And emerging means also it comes from the bottom. So in a lot of major organization change, it's important to go beyond team coaching as quickly as possible. Simultaneously get 80 people on board. Right? Simultaneously. And then nothing will stop the change. Now, it needs to be carried by them. Uh, for, for me, resistance is healthy. People don't... Well, take the first law or second law of thermodynamics. If you put any energy in any direction, you will automatically create the corresponding energy in the opposite direction. Okay? And that will create heat. That's what we call resistance in heaters. Okay? So if you have resistance in the system, it's because somebody's pushing. People don't resist change. They resist, resist imposed change. Okay? Now when a leader says, how do you deal with resistance? <laughs> I'll say, quit trying to shove on them something they don't want. It's healthy. It's healthy. It's only, uh, some coaches say, how do you deal with clients who resist? Start being a coach. Yeah. Say thank you to the client for teaching you something. Okay? So, in a way, in systems, you don't choose one side and the other, but you go together with the flow. I see. You have to be aware of all the movements here and there. So it's time, yes. Uh, yeah, but I, I saw there was one lady with one question. If yes. it's like 30 seconds, you it's could answer. It's a 30-second answer. <laughs> it's, it's a very, very easy question. Um, how many systemic team patterns have you detected? Can oh, you name some? No, no, no. Uh, no, no. Uh, I'm an ethnologist, anthropologist by nature. Okay. In other words, I do not go around making categories. And sh you meet a client and you need to be curious about how that client is different, unique. You don't want to have models and models and models and then stop thinking and say, that's the model, that's the model, that's the model. Okay, so it's not an expert approach, it's a curiosity approach. Now, I love the word curious, you know where it comes from. No, cure, like curing people. If you have curiosity, you will cure. If you have a real curiosity, okay? That is important in coaching. Don't come with your models. Come with your curiosity. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. This is a treat. Thank you.